On Christmas Eve, many years ago, I lay quietly in my bed. I did not rustle the sheets. I breathed slowly and silently. I was listening for a sound, a sound a friend had told me I'd never hear ringing bells of Santa's sleigh. There's no Santa, my friends insisted, but I knew he was wrong. Late that night, I did, I did hear the sounds, though not a ringing bells. From outside came the sounds of hissing steam and squeaking metal. I looked through my window and saw a train standing perfectly still in front of my house. It was wrapped in an apron of steam. Snowflakes fell lightly around it. A conductor stood at the open door of one of the cars. He took lar a large pocket lock watch from his vest, then looked up at my window. I put on my slippers and robe. I tiptoed downstairs and out the door. All aboard, the conductor cried out. I ran up to him. Well, are you coming? Where? Why, to the North Pole, of course. This is the Polar Express. <coughs> took his ouch I took his outstretched hand and he pulled me aboard. The train was filled with other children all in their pajamas and nightgowns. We sang Christmas carols and ate candies with nugget centers as white as snow. We drank hot cocoa as thick and as rich as melted chocolate bars. Outside, the lights of towns and villages flickered in the distance as the Polar Express raced northward. Soon there were no more lights to be seen. We traveled through cold, dark forest where lean wolves roamed and white Held rabbits hid from our train as it thundered through the quiet wilderness. We climbed mountains so high it seemed as if we could scrape the moon. But the Polar Express never slowed down. Faster and faster we ran along, rolling over creeks and through valleys like a car on a roller coaster. The mountains turned into hills, the hills to snow covered plains. We crossed a barren desert of ice of ice the the great polar ice cap. Lights appeared in the distance. They looked like the lights of a strange ocean line sailing on a frozen sea. There is there is the North Pole, said the conductor. The North Pole is a huge city standing alone on the top of the world, filled with factories where every Christmas toy was made. At first, we saw no elves. They, gather, the, they are gathering at the center of the city, the conductor told us. That is where Santa will, fi, will feed the first gifts of Christmas. Who receives the first gift, we all asked. He will choose one of you. Look, shouted one of the children, the elves. Outside we saw hundreds of elves. As, we, as our train dressed close to the center of the North Pole, we showed to a crawl so crowded for the streets with Santa's helpers. When the Polar Express could go no farther, we stopped at the, con at the conductor led us outside. We pressed through the crowd to the edge of a large open circle. In front of, it, in front of us stood Santa's sleigh. The reindeer were excited. They pranced and paced, ringing the silver bells that hung from their harnesses. It was a magical sound like nothing I ever heard. Across the circle, the elves m moved apart and Santa appeared. The elves cheered wildly. He marched over to us and pointed at me and t to me and said, Let's have this fellow here. He jumped into his sl into his sleigh. The conductor handed me up. I sat on Santa's knee, and he asked, "Now, what would you like for Christmas?" I knew that I could have any gift I could imagine, imagining. But the but the thing I wanted most for Christmas was not, was not inside of Santa's giant big sack. What I wanted for what I wanted more than the more than anything was one silver bell from Santa's sleigh. When I asked Santa's when I asked Santa 
smiled. He he gave me a hug and told an elf elf to cut a bell bell from a reindeer's harness. The, the elf passed it up to Santa. He stood holding the bell high above his him and called out the first gift of Christmas. As soon as we were back inside the Polar Express. The only children asked to see the bell. I reached into my pocket, but the only thing I felt was a hole. I had lost the silver bell from Santa's sleigh. Let's hurry outside and look for it, one of the children said, but the train gave a sudden lurch and started moving. We were on our way home. It broke my heart to lose the bell. When the train reached my house, I sadly left the other children. I stood at my doorway and waved goodbye. The conductor yelled s something from the moving train, but I couldn't hear him. What yelled? What I yelled at him? He he cupped his hand around his mouth. Merry Christmas. Polar Express let out a lo loud blast from its whistle and sped away. On Christmas on Christmas morning my little sister Sarah and I and I opened our presents. When it when it looked as if everything had been unwrapped, Sarah found one last small box behind the tree. It had my name on it. Inside was the silver bell. There there was a note. Found this on the sea of my sleigh. Fix that hole in your pocket. Mrs. C. I shook the bell. It made the most beautiful sound my sister and I have ever heard. But my mother said, "Well, I didn't shake the bell. My parents had nothing. Had had not heard a sound." At one time, most of my friends can hear it, the bell. But you guys as have to stop. You have to go back to my mother's side. Too bad. Yes, it's broken. You need that part. Yes. Yes. Let's just back up into the last one. We're just gonna cut it out. Okay. What? It says yes. The bell's broken at the bottom. Oh, it's too bad. Yes. Yeah, you need that one. Okay. Oh, that's too bad. Yes, yes it is. It's broken, said my father. Yes, it is broken, said my father. Yes, and I'd shaken the bell, my parents had not heard a sound. The end. No, it's not, guys. You have a whole page. Did we just restart? Just, re just redo that part. When I shake the bell, my parents had not heard a sound. At one time, most of my friends could hear the bell. It's too bad. Yes, yes it is. It's broken, said my father. When I shake the bell, my parents had not heard a sound. At one time, most of my friends could hear the bell, but as the years passed, it felt it fell silent for all of them. Even Sarah found one Christmas that she could no longer hear is hear its sweet sound. Though I've grown old, though. The bell still rings for me, as if it does for all who truly believe. The end.